Hi everyone, this is Neil Ryder here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a very difficult and challenging case involving a patient who attended with bilateral, fully occluding, soft, mushy, glutinous earwax. And in addition, they've got collapsed ear canal entrances, which makes it very difficult for me to uh, examine, let alone insert the instrument inside their ear to, in order to remove the wax. I'll discuss the collapsed canals a bit later on in the video, just to explain um, the causes for that and potential remedies and solutions long term. So I'm just commencing with this there right here. This is the ear that they felt was the worst of the two. And as you can see with the uh, zone of suction probe where we're performing micro suction, it's not coming out in big pieces, this wax. Indeed, some of the soft wax blocked the inside of the suction probe. So I've just seen an opportunity to see if I can try and scoop some of this wax out. Um, I've just used the Jobs and Horner correct. And although I did remove a little bit of earwax, it was not bringing out the whole entire mass. So I've reverted back to micro suction and you may have just seen as I was entering it, it gives you a very good idea there how narrow this patient's ear canal entrance is and I'm, in order to gain access inside I'm actually retracting so I'm pulling back their ear back and up and when we pull the ear back and up what it does not only does it straighten the ear canal but it also widens it and once I've widened the ear canal I'm then using the endoscope tip like a door stop, I'm inserting it into the ear and I'm pushing it to the left hand side in this, the case of their right ear. And the endoscope, the tip of the endoscope, so the side tip, should I say, is just keeping the ear canal entrance ajar, which then allows me to insert the instrument into the ear. I am gonna have to install some olive oil earwax spray in a moment to change the consistency of this wax. I think I've just done it here. Uh, without this, um, it's going to be very difficult to suction this. I can't really use any other instrument. The Jobson horn that I used initially wasn't very effective at removing this occlusion. And it's just too soft for forceps or an ear hook. So I'm hoping the olive oil spray will help bind the wax together. So when I do suction it, it comes out in larger pieces. They also do have a lot of hair at the entrance, as you can see here. So that, on occasions, can... Just slightly obscure the view that I'm trying to achieve, but it wasn't negatively impacting the procedure. So um, on occasions, I, if the ear is extremely hairy, I can use some forceps and almost pluck these hairs out. And that can improve the, 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 uh, the visualisation of the earwax. So again, just using the endoscope to stretch the patient's ear open. Now, this patient has to attend every nine months to have their earwax removed. And no doubt it's their ear anatomy that's contributing to this buildup of wax and dead skin in the ear. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning, at the top of the video, that they have got a collapsed ear canal. And collapsed ear canals can happen for uh, many different reasons. Uh, it could be due to chronic ear infections and uh, subsequently, the cartilage portion in particular, uh, so which is the lateral third of the ear canal, so the, the outermost region of the ear canal, um, weakens and it causes the cartilage to just collapse. Um, age, so as we get older, uh, the cartilage um, naturally weakens and gravity can take hold of it, causing the cartilage in the ear, similar to the tip of the nose, to droop and collapse. Um, Another potential reason is the cartilage in our ear continues to grow and the back part of the cartilage of the ear canal near the entrance, if that overgrows, it's then lost its structural support and that can cause the cartilage to buckle over itself, leading to a collapsed ear canal. So under those circumstances, if the, the the collapsed ear canal is causing significant issues for the patient, for example, it's a completely obliterating the entrance so there's no sound can travel through so it's causing a significant hearing loss or the patient's developing chronic ear infections as a result of their collapsed ear canal um, an ENT surgeon can perform a meatoplasty where they can trim some of this cartilage away and widen some of the the, the ear canal for the patient um, I've managed to remove a, a large plug of 
wax there and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the olive oil spray. So the olive oil spray has worked a treat. However, we've now got this more hardened wax lodged right up against the eardrum and it's lodged in a region called the anterior recess and also the inferior recess. As the ear canal um, travels towards the eardrum, there's a, a narrowing about a half a centimetre in front of the eardrum and we call that an, the isthmus. Uh, an isthmus is just a generic term for a narrowing. So we have an isthmus about a half a centimetre away from the eardrum, so that's the point where the ear canal narrows. And then beyond that, it widens back out again. And by the ear canal widening back out again, it creates a recess, um, almost like an alcove, to the front part of the ear canal where the eardrum is. And we call that the anterior recess. So anterior means to the front. And it can also create the, this narrowing and widening of the ear canal, an inferior recess, so uh, almost like a trench or a basin at the roof, sorry, at the base of the ear canal near the eardrum. And you can see that this is lodged very deep into the recesses of this patient's ear canal. I've just had to instill some more olive oil spray to remove this. I struggled to get the full zolna suction probe in because of how narrow the ear canal is. So I'm just trying to initially use the fine end and I'm trying to tuck this wax underneath the canal wall. So the the ear canal itself is somewhat engulfed this, this wax. It's trapped it. And what I'm trying to do is at the roof of the ear canal is bring this wax down and under the roof of the ear canal to, to extract it. However, that's still not coming away. So I'm, I'm refocusing my attention to the anterior recess. So this is the anterior recess I'm working in. I've had to curl and bend the tip of the fine end to get access into the, uh, into the anterior recess. And you may have just seen that at the tip of the sucker. Half the eardrum is visible. So the portion of the eardrum that's visible, we would call that the posterior quadrant, which is the back region. And once again, I'm just trying to, with the fine end, manoeuvre this wax out. So now I'm going into the inferior recess. I'm trying to lift it up and away. And it is moving, you can see that, but it is lodged still. And ultimately, I think I'm going to go back in with the full zone of suction probe. I've managed to get it in because we need more suction power. It's just not powerful enough, this, this fine end. No matter how hard I try and move it away, I have got a suction grip, but the suction grip isn't strong enough to remove this from the anterior recess. So I've just got back in with the, the full zone of suction probe, and I'm just going to the roof, and now I've got that additional power. I'm bringing it down and away, and as you can see, I've managed to loosen it, and it's now coming out of the ear. So this was a lot firmer, it was a lot harder. The, the more lateral midsection of the ear canal, that wax was quite soft and stodgy and mushy. We also have that medial aspect, so towards the eardrum, was a lot more crusty and dry and large. And again, that's the patient's ear canal. You can see how narrow it is and collapsed, and I've had to stretch it open just to insert the endoscope. And we've managed to successfully clear their right ear. So the left ear, similarly, the entrance is collapsed and once more this wax laterally near the entrance. It's very soft, sticky. There's loads of hairs in the way as well. And I'm just performing microsuction once more. Fortunately, this wasn't as difficult as their right ear. It's always their right ear that's the more challenging. And I think that is just the consistency is a bit more softer and mushier and the ear canal is narrower on that side. And... I'm just trying to release some of this wax from the floor of the ear canal and detaching it from the side walls of the ear. So you can already see the floor of the ear canal there. I've just put some drops in just to soften this plug, just to get more purchase and more grip to perform microsuction. And I'm actually performing microsuction whilst the olive oil's in the ear. When I first started using olive oil, ear spray during procedures. I used to ask the patient to tilt the head over so the oil can seep into the ear and soften the wax. I would let it soak up for a few minutes. 
before asking the patient to tilt the head over in the opposite direction so the ear with the drops in is now facing towards the ground, the floor, which then will allow the drops to drain out of the ear. And I will do that first prior to going back in with the sucker. But now more and more, I'm just performing it whilst the olive oil spray is in the ear. So I think I find that it's more effective. It can be more challenging though, because when you're suctioning whilst the oil's in the ear, the suction probe not, is not only vacuuming the, the wax, but it's also vacuuming some of the oil. And that can cause some blurring at the tip of the endoscope. But something that you can manage, um, just sometimes you have to come out a few times, just to wipe the tip of, this, of this, uh, the endoscope um, using some alco wipe. I managed to get a good suction grip, and now I'm just trying to tease this through. You can see that what wax plug is larger than the entrance of the ear canal. So as I was bringing it through, it snapped away. It's not a problem there. We'll go back in and remove this more deeper part of the wax. That's the patient's eardrum. That's visible. I'm just going to mop up near the entrance. There's a layer of dead skin. You'll see me peel that away. And there's just a bit of wax in the midsection. It's not significant. We could leave that. But whilst the patient's here, I decided to try and get that out for them. Just working away near the entrance. We know we're near the entrance because of all the hairs. These hair strands, follicles, should only be located on the outer third of the ear canal. Uh, when you approach the, the, the osseous portion, the, the bony part of the ear canal, there shouldn't be any hair follicles. So you shouldn't see any hairs extending out of the ear canal. You may see a few loose hairs like you are here. So this is just right near the entrance. I'm angling the endoscope downwards so I can get a good view. And the reason why I'm removing this skin, sometimes there can be some unpleasant surprises here. So things like a canal cholesteatoma that's hiding away underneath the the skin or some ex, uh, exposed bone or eroded bone. So I do like removing some of this skin at the floor of the ear canal, especially just to see if there's anything hidden away that needs further investigation or treatment. Fortunately, in this case, um, underneath that blanket of skin, the ear canal was fine, it was healthy. So just another look at the eardrum. As you can hear significantly better. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Do take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.